Assalamu alaikum, Louisville. What's going on? <laughs> what to talk? I was wanting to talk a little bit about love, but I got a little intro. Um, democracy begins at home. Ironically, this T-shirt was given to me by the Malcolm X Debate Club. Malcolm X Debate Club, give me the democracy begins at home T-shirt. Ironic, because they didn't want democracy. They didn't want me in that room because I would have fought for democracy. I would have fought for what was right, for justice. I would have fought against the apartheid that Mary Mudd is using in order to elevate her status. Very, very ironic. Very ironic, her and I meeting, because I think we're both on the side of black folks, but we weren't for each other, right? Uh, after, I guess, we kind of got into an argument, maybe there was some respect, but fuck them. Fuck, fuck the Malcolm X Debate Club. U of L, University of Louisville, you got maybe two good professors at University of Louisville, and the rest are a bunch of pretentious snobs, a bunch of rich fucking pretentious snobs that don't know shit about working class struggles. They don't understand about struggles. They don't understand about life. They don't understand shit. They don't understand jack shit. And they definitely don't understand democracy. Mary Mudd, she's a white woman, a white woman who wants to be a part of uh, Malcolm X Debate Club. She wants to lead the Malcolm X Debate Club. You know, I, by itself, that's, that's that ain't no thing. But you keep on adding some more. She got three white women that's got uh, 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 privileged status in the club. So three white women, three blue-eyed devils, right? Three blue-eyed devils, they get the best seating in the room. And then the black coaches, they got to be uh, spilling out in the aisle. And then you got, you know, all the, all the slaves in the middle. All the slaves are, are actually doing the work. They didn't win any of their damn debates. The Cardinal didn't give a shit about covering them. There's racism everywhere. You want to attack racism? Let's uh, confront the Cardinal. You don't give a fuck about confronting racism. You don't, give a, you don't give a fuck about solidarity. You don't give a fuck about democracy. You don't give a fuck about people struggling, working people values. You don't give a shit. All you know is about white people privilege, white people stuck up being the oppressor. You want to sit there and say that, you know, you know what's best? You don't know what's best. You oppress it. All you're doing is just taking the masses role and you're trying to say and you're the benevolent dictator. I saw you in class. You're going to sit there and say like you understand all the uh, uh, logical fallacies. You didn't. Re all you did was pull up Wikipedia. You pulled up Wikipedia and all the logical fallacies that was on it and then you give some shitty ass explanation for each one of them. Anybody could have done that. Well, that's what we're paying $50,000 for. We're paying $50,000 just to, uh, for on Wikipedia just so you can read us facts that we could have got off of Wikipedia, that's not an education. We're not getting educated. Uh, the, the way that they're educating right now in the universities is to be oppressors. They're not, education is supposed to be liberating. It's not supposed to be oppressing and it's supposed to be liberating. So, yeah, of course, of course, Mary Mudd, Mary Mudd of UofL, Malcolm X Debate Club, she wouldn't know shit about white privilege at the uh, Trayvon Martin rally. She got up there and made sure, oh, yeah, white people, you better be ready to get rid of your privilege. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's wonderful. Like, I I wanted to get mad at all white people and be like, oh, I'm going to take all white people's privilege. But you know what? I'm not going to do that no more. I'm not going to justify the stupid shit she's saying. But she wants to sit there and say white people got to get rid of their privilege. That's right, Mary Mudd. You need to get rid of your goddamn privilege. You fucking rich. You got money. You got the head of the position, you got the head of the department, you got the head of the Malcolm X Debate Club, you got all that scholarship money, you doling it out for those people, I guess, who kisses your ass the best. Why don't you actually get some democracy? Why don't you actually get some solidarity? Why don't you get some morals? And some, you know, actual, have a moral core. That way, you, why don't you be a decent person? Be a decent fucking person. You know, be different than everybody else. Be different. Why you gotta be just like everybody else? Be different. Mary Mud. Yeah, lose your privilege. You need to lose your privilege. All you're doing is, I, I've been, I've had rough life. I've been in a homeless situation. I've been in situations where I've experienced homelessness. So you want to tell me, oh, you got white privilege? Well, you're going around telling homeless white people they got white privilege. They, they do. They do. But what does that fucking make you? What kind of fucking person is going to go to a homeless person and be like, hey, homeless person, I know you're living under a bridge and you ain't showered and you, you, you could have froze to death out in the winter, but I don't give a fuck about any of the your life struggles. I'm going to fucking treat you like a goddamn piece of shit. I'm going to treat you like you're one of these fucking white supremacists who run this fucking country and then making uh, this country so imbalanced and unequal. Mary Mudd ain't going to confront Farrah Ramsey. Mary Mudd ain't going to confront the board of trustees. She ain't going to confront the mayor. She ain't going to confront Frankfurt. She's not going to confront anybody. 
She'll confront poor people. That's all she'll confront. She'll confront the people that walk into the Malcolm X Debate Club. There's two men, two other white men that walked in there, and they were so, such assholes. And the fucking skinny little white gay kid. If you're gay, man, then you could go in there. But if you're like a man's man, you can't. There's, there's no room for you at the Malcolm X Debate Club. If, especially if you're a white man. You know, if you got this uh, color, complexion, skin, and you got a dick, you're not welcome at Malcolm X Debate Club. If you're a gay man, that's okay. But if you're a straight man, you're not welcome. It, all straight men. There was a, there was a uh, black gentleman that was going to be my partner, too. He was like, fuck this. This is some bullshit. You want to sit there and talk about how I got privilege. You know, at least in the 1950s, black people were in the back of the bus. I wasn't even on the fucking bus. I went there every fucking day. Every fucking day at 8 in the morning, I was ready for practice. And as long as I was off to the side, not saying a word, you're all happy about that. But as soon as I stood up and started speaking, you, know, you didn't like that shit. Y'all could have developed me. Y'all could have um, geared me in this direction or that direction. But instead, you want to just manhandle me. And it ain't no thing. It's not like I... It has nothing to do with, with gender. Denzel Washington, off of the Untouchables, or the uh, debate, the great debaters, he turned to be a dick. You know, there's that scene where it's like, don't you dare question my authority. Oh, fuck you, Denzel. I want democracy. I'm so fucking sick and tired of living in the greatest fucking democracy, like everybody says. And we're fighting for freedom of democracy overseas and not seeing any fucking democracy. Where's the fucking democracy? Somebody show me one fucking instance of democracy. It's not in our work. It's not in our homes. It's not in our schools. It's not anywhere. There's no democracy in America. America is not democratic. Yeah, we got elections, but 12% of Kentuckians voted in elections. 12%. 12% of Kentuckians voted for our governor. So that's our president, right? The the president of our state. Twelve percent, twelve percent. That ain't that ain't even close to a democracy. Democracy is above fifty percent. So above fifty percent, eighty-eight percent of Kentuckians saying, "Fuck this establishment, fuck this government. We're not going to participate in our democracy, and we're not going to put any pressure on them. And we're not going to let them know that we give a fuck about ourselves or them or anything else." And that that sends a loud message. That sends a loud message to the people who run this country. Don't don't give a shit. Don't don't try to help anybody else out. Don't they're not voting for you. So who gives a damn about them? Six percent of the public voted you in. Those are the six percent of people you need to make sure they get out and vote again. That's what you need to do. <laughs> so this was about love, and I swear it's about love. <laughs> it's about self love right now. I got my own dignity, and I don't like when people affront me. Okay, you don't fucking know me. You don't know my struggles. You don't know what I've been through. So you want to sit there and tell me, like, I got all this fucking wonderful luxuries? Fuck you. Fuck you. You chose rich people over poor people. That's what the fuck you chose. Just because he has brown skin. Someone's got brown skin, they're in. Somebody's got light skin, they've been poor and had a struggle? Fuck them. Nah, fuck you. Fuck you. It's a class warfare. The biggest thing is a class warfare. And fascism. Anytime one group wants to oppress another group, that's when fuck things get fucked up. When that power is corrupt. And you're corrupt, Mary Mud. You're corrupt. You're corrupt as hell. You're more, just as corrupt as Pharaoh Ramsey's are. You corrupt. And you racist. Only white, blue-eyed devils get to run Malcolm X Bay Club. Who ever fucking heard a thing? You think Malcolm X would want blue-eyed devils running the Malcolm X Bay Club? Blue-eyed racist devils who believe in apartheid? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're, uh, you're an embarrassment to Malcolm X. You're an embarrassment. There's a uh, one person. <laughs> couple more things. Cause the uh, the fucking racism that came out of Malcolm X Debate Club kind of followed me around in all avenues I was going. I was in social movements class. I'm in, uh, you know, uh, social movements. I'm in Black Studies. I'm in Occupy. I'm hanging out with the liberals, or I'm trying to hang out with the so-called liberals. But I guess if you're a liberal professional, then you've already made a career, and you don't actually give a fuck about making change. You just want to make money, just like Jake Payne. You know, they he's he's making money off of all your old misery. Why the fuck does he actually want to see things get better? As long as he can bitch about it till he's dead, he don't give a shit if poverty stays around. He likes making jokes. Oh, you know, it's a crappy day in the neighborhood when you go rob a bank and get shot in the neck. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, that's funny to you, Jay Payne, but somebody got shot in the neck. And why the fuck is he robbing a bank? Because the economy sucks? You want to stand up against Gatewood? Gatewood Gatewood was for legalizing gay marriage. Who the fuck is for legalizing gay marriage in Kentucky? It's still illegal. 2004, it's fucking illegal to be gay in Kentucky. You're in a gay bar or you're in a, a restaurant and somebody says you got to leave. If you're at Chick-fil-A and somebody says, hey, we don't want you to stay here in Kentucky, you got to leave. It's a private business. They're allowed to ask you to leave. 
if you're gay. There, there's no laws against discrimination against gay people. In fact, it's quite the opposite. 2004 was when Kentucky voted in uh, uh, in favor of traditional marriage and anti. It's actually more, it's an anti-gay marriage amendment. You could have got married before that amendment if you're straight. So it doesn't strengthen straight marriages. It makes gay marriages harder to obtain. You have to go to Massachusetts or something or live your life in, I, I wouldn't say fear because I know a lot of gay folks that have a lot of really good friends. Um, so it's not, I guess it's just like anything else. If you're around your circle, you're, you're fine. But in the greater society, there's a, look at the lines at Chick-fil-A, man. They were going so fucking far. So, yeah, so this racist is following me around everywhere. And it kind of sucks because I'm side with the marginalized and oppressed. So I'm hanging out with, you know, black folks, gay people, women, anybody that's traditionally oppressed as a group. So, you know, that's, that's my mistake right there. I'm generalizing and everybody's individual. So, um, but this is good for me to be able to talk about because it, it, it fucking bothered me. They're going to fucking, dis you're going to discriminate against me, against me. Jesus fucking Christ, there's so many fucking white racists out here. I'm fucking taking on these fucking white racists out here. You know what I am to these white supremacists? I'm a nigger lover. That's what I am. I'm a nigger lover. So I'm on the house with them, and then I'm hanging out with the oppressed, and they're not accepting me there. So where the fuck do I go? Well, you know, it just, I'm being marginalized and oppressed by the marginalized and oppressed, and that's isolating me even more. But it's Ender's game. I'll figure it out. <laughs> And frankly, when I'm pissing off both white people and black people, when I get both white people and black people saying the same shit, then I, I, almost, I almost guarantee I know exactly I'm on the right path. So, um, one person that I was talking to in social movements class, and I wasn't talking to him, I was participating in conversation, trying to get my participation points, and I'm in um, uh, social movements class, and... I was talking about cultural regeneration, about how I've just learned about my uh, German heritage, how I've been, you know, just a white American, and now I'm learning about my German heritage. So my German heritage, we got here in 1869. So 1869 is when the grips over Germans pulled up uh, to the shores of America. We were speaking German. We had a German culture. Um, we were speaking German, had a German culture, we were Catholics, so we stuck to our, you know, amongst ourselves, we believed in family pride, we believed in hard work, a lot of things with the German culture, smart people, engineers, scientists, uh, you know, just educators, just a ton of, Germany has brought a lot to America, the entire education system of America is German, from the vocational school to the common school to the kindergarten to the university, every fucking bit of it, every bit of America is German culture. So I'm thinking about my own personal story. So being white to me just meant that I had no past and I only looked to the future. But that, I made that shit up, okay? I just made that up. It actually meant that I, being white meant I had no past. I had no real identity. I just like everybody else. I just blend in with anybody else. And that's boring. That's stupid. The norm is that we're all different. We all got a heartbeat. We all care. We all have a brain and put our pants on one leg at a time. But we're all different and we're all unique and we need to embrace our uniqueness and our wonderful differences. So I was talking about culture regeneration and I was saying how, you know, it's not, and it's not even German. I mean, I come from Bavaria and Prussia. Bavaria and Prussia was Germany before what Germany was called. Um, uh, that's what Germany, they were German, that was what Germany was called before Germany actually became established. So, Talking about culture regeneration, I mentioned that I have African ancestors. Well, there's this woman in there that didn't like the fact that I was saying that because of the one drop rule that would make me black. She didn't like that I had said that. And then, uh, which is true, 11% is way more than just one drop. Uh, uh, but she also didn't like when I said that I got African ancestors. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm sure you got African ancestors, but... But what? But what the fuck? You're like, well, you, you sure I got African ancestors? Yeah, right. Uh, my fucking... White supremacist cousins, they was fucking dicks to me because I like to say that we shouldn't be racist. And now I got, you know, Miss fucking Goody Gumdrops want to fucking tell me that I, I don't have African. I mean, that's fucking bullshit. She basically insulted me, insulted my family, insulted my roots. She wants to throw my ancestors off the board of the Amistad. She wants to lynch my motherfucking ancestors. For what? What the fuck she gained out of lynching the one fucking black ancestor in my family? What does she gain out of that? That's fucking bullshit. It's racism and it's bullshit. And you're saying the exact same shit as white supremacists are saying. So that's why I feel like 
white supremacists and black supremacists, fuck y'all. Y'all want to fucking say that y'all's race better than everybody else? Good. I hope you motherfuckers, I hope y'all kill each other off. But when it comes to the rest of the folks who actually want to get along and build a multicultural society, I'm down. I'm so down with that. I'm so sick of white supremacy. And plus, to all the rich white people out in this world, we all niggas. We all poor as shit. We're cheap labor. That's, that's what the 1%, that's all they all look at us the same. White, black, it don't matter. We cheap labor.